Now that we have the 3D model, we can start to focus on what information we will need to extract from the model for business and building project management purposes. All of this information will be taken directly from the 3D model that we created. No other source is needed for additional building and performance data purposes. Now we'll look at the results from our 3D model, and that's build materials and sizes. Before we do any lists, we'll have to run through the sorting and labeling routine. The sorting and labeling routine will identify ident uh, identical objects and give them the same number. So that's my sort and match setting here. I start with object number one and run my sorting through either the entire position. I can also start for every floor or for every wall with number one. We'll just go for the entire building and then look for identical pieces either in the entire position inside one floor or for one wall. So I want to start and sort according to story and also identify packages and elements. And that will now run through and give every object a label that makes it easier to identify later on on the lists and on the shop drawings. So now that the sorting is done, we can generate the first results and I'll move up here and make a material list. So there's different types of lists I can generate from here, either material lists, dimension takeoffs, and windows and doors. We'll go to the material list first. That's my bill of materials. And uh, here I can select what I want to take in consideration, the entire building or just one story. Then I want to have a list for my timbers, for my stick frame, and for the sheet material for my plywood, insulation, and the gypsum board. Profile beams would be eye joists or metal connectors, fixtures, but those two should do for now. All that is written into an access database and the project data program is the front end for that database where I can manipulate the data, look at it and print different things. So here's my timber list and my sheet material list. We'll have a quick look at the timber list. So we'll go edit. And that's the timber list for that building. So here I have ground floor, stud, and the material taken from the database. If I look at the database, I can specify different materials. Here I have spruce band fir, grade two or better, with an order number depending on my supplier, color set, and price per unit, unit is board foot, any additional information that goes into that, and all that comes with that number. Here's my sorting number, that's what the labeling routine applied to every piece. And that's two pieces, four pieces here, one and a half by five and a half inches, two by four, uh, two by six, and the total length. So that covers my entire building. All the stick frame components are listed in here. From there, I can export that to Microsoft Excel, for example. And that opens directly in Excel. And I can start calculating things in Excel, doing my spreadsheets and all that. So that's a lot of information in that spreadsheet here. Okay, if I close Excel, I can go back to here. And of course, I can print lists directly from the project data program. So for different purposes, I can take different templates. Just go to output. And uh, I just want to have a regular order list on a letter format and uh, either Microsoft, OpenOffice or PDF. Currency is dollars. I can insert my own address, customer, address, suppliers, any additional text information and just click the button and that goes directly into a PDF document that I can email to my 
supplier, set it up with my letterhead and have all that information on a nice template here. Okay, now we close that PDF again and go back to the 3D model. Now, additional information about my walls is dimension takeoff. Before, in the wall properties, I've set up what information I want to have on my walls. And now I'm going to take that off the 3D model and put it into the database. I do that either just one floor or the entire position, subtract opening openings, and I do all the walls. OK. And that will put information into the access database that, again, I handle with the project data program. Now, on the dimension takeoff side here on the right, I have my exterior walls, interior walls. This is exterior walls for B12. That's the ventilated siding, the furring walls, plaster walls. But just look at the external walls here. That's 27 walls total. 450 feet, total outer area of 3,500 and something square foot, and that broken down per wall with the openings. So that's my garage door, window openings, French doors. So you have the control pictures there to show what openings have been taken out, and some openings are small enough, so they're not taken into consideration for the costing and quoting. They're just Overmeasured. Okay. Now I can split the walls up into the individual slices. That's what my tick marks on the wall buildups did. And here we have sheathing boards on the outside with the total area. True slice area will take all the openings out, independent of size. Then I have gypsum board on the inside, plywood. The true slice area of the plywood is going to be less than on the sheathing boards because it's further inside the wall. And uh, the gypsum board on the very inside is going to be even less because it's the inside area. Because of all the corners, this is less than the outside. So I have an exact overview on the amount of material that I'm going to need to build those walls. Expanded polystyrene and mineral wool, I have insulation takeoffs. So especially for the mineral wool, because that's in the same layer as the timbers, the stick frame is already taken out and I have the exact square foot amount of my bats that I'm going to need. Or if I do sprain foam or blow-in insulation, cellulose fiber, I also have the cubic foot value for that. That was the dimension takeoff. Go back to my 3D model. And we still need to do windows and doors, the schedules for that, so we can order that material. Go back to my results, lists, window and door list is what I want to have. For all walls, just for one floor, just for one wall. Okay, again, information goes into the database. Go back to project data program. And I have the window and door list on the material side. I'm going to print that right away. This time, we're not going to do a PDF. We put that right into Microsoft Word. Currency is set to US dollars. And that goes into my Word template. And I have my window schedule with the descriptions, the sizes in my Word document. And I can edit here, print, email directly to the supplier. OK, I'll show you where that information on the windows actually came from. Just zoom in on that window here. That was the one we put in in the model. Go to Edit. And the information on the list, you'll find on information attached to every window. So that's the kitchen window with the U-value, G-value, and the window number. 
Okay, back to the flow plan. And we're going to do a couple of 2D drawings now. So, in ground plan, I can do flow drawings, wall drawings. We'll do the flow drawings right now. I'll store and insert the 2D drawings right next to the 3D model. And here I can define the content of my floor plans. I want to have two floors, ground floor and one floor up, second floor. Over here, my unit system, I set up what units I want to use. Here define the dimensions, I dimension my outside walls. And for the openings, I give a center dimension and all that in architectural dimension style. So there's my 2D drawing. I just grab that here at the corner and put it right next to the 3D model. Drop it there, text box, and that's my second floor here at the corner. And move that up here in that area. Text box for that. Okay, this is all 2D drawings now taken directly off the 3D model. So you can see the dimension lines, window sizes, all automatically dimensioned to my specifications. Just regenerate to make the curves a little bit nicer. Let's zoom back out. And up here, my second floor, same thing, automatic dimensions created. And if I rotate that up into 3D, you can actually see that this is just 2D drawing objects generated directly off the 3D model. And the 3D model still is there. Okay. Back to top view. The 2D drawing blocks stay connected to the 3D model. So if I need to make any changes, I make the change on the 3D model. And for example, move that wall here out by three feet. Okay, so the other two walls stretch automatically. And my drawing blocks don't show that change yet. So that's a recalculation. All my floor plans need to be recalculated. And you can see how it automatically adds the dimensions, moves the, three, uh, the wall out to match up with the 3D drawing again. So from here, we'll move to sections and elevations to show some more detail. Sections and elevations are defined here. The front, back, left and right elevations are there automatically. And I can just pick one and turn that into a hidden view. So here I have my structural components, my doors and windows in a section view up to the roof. And I'll turn that into a sectional drawing, which again I'm going to put right next to my 3D model. Define the content here, what kinds of dimensions I want to have, representation and labeling, very similar to the floor plan. Okay, that turns it into a 2D block. And I can just grab that at the corner and put it on the right side of my 3D model. Put that here. Text box. Okay. Now you can see the dimension lines that have been created automatically. And I have another section that I positioned down here that goes lengthwise through the building. Shows all my eye joists of the garage. Connections to internal walls, external walls, my big glue lamp here over the window. And that should do for my drawings. There's the great room again, garage, my office section. I can edit all that. That's all 2D AutoCAD entities. So I can move text around. Change lines, change dimension style. So all that looks good to me for now. 
floor up here. Nothing that overwrites. Okay, that should be good to go. Now the next drawings I'm gonna uh, generate is elevations of each individual wall. Actual framing drawings for the guys inside to frame the walls up. So I do that in wall design here, where I isolate individual walls. And from there, I can generate wall drawings right away. Those are not gonna be next to the 3D model. Those go into a separate DWG. So I just pick a template and generate a new drawing file. That's gonna be a lot of walls. That's my wall framing drawings, just simple framing. Calculate hidden lines, show a story overview so I know what wall I'm looking at. I wanna have labels for my windows and doors. Objects labels, I just want to have the sorting number for the framing layer so I can reference it back to my um, to my lists. Dimensions. And I insert a timber list right next with the drawing. And let it run. And that's going to generate a separate DWG, which I can bring up from the project management right here. So here I have the drawings, ground floor wall. And this is my actual building model. And if I open that up, that's a DWG, opens an AutoCAD. And there have all the walls side by side, fully dimensioned. So now you understand why I didn't want to put that right next to the 3D model. Here I have wall number nine. That's the wall I'm looking at from the outside. So it keeps it easy overview here. I have a horizontal section through the wall, a vertical section there. Here I have the elevation of the wall, some text that I need to move out a little bit. So it's better to see. That's window number eight sitting in there. All of that is, again, regular AutoCAD 2D drawing objects that I can edit with the same AutoCAD functions. Over here is my timber list, and that's the sorting numbers and the length of the object. So number 463 is 10 feet 5 inches long, and I can find that on the drawing Same here, the windows, so I can reference them back to my window list. That's my flat flooring walls. You can see the buttons running there. And that's my wall drawings. Just put them on layouts and they're good to go. Move that over here a little bit, stretch it out. That's a whole lot of walls, all done automatically. And ready to be printed and go out on site. 